The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. This is the uh, March 20th edition of today's Trader's Edge show. <sighs> Haven't rehearsed this one. <clears throat> Anyways, I cannot do the opening that I normally do. <clears throat> and the reason is that I am sincere about everything that I do say. And I do believe that in life, everything is happening for us, not to us. But as you can imagine, my struggle has always been death. And as you know, or hopefully you know, or I don't know, hopefully, but uh, if you don't know by now, we lost David White last week. And he's had an amazing impact on each of us. And so the only way that I've been able to reconcile death in believing that everything in life happens for us is realizing that I don't understand much, uh, certainly when it comes to the global world, the universe, we'll call it the universe. And so my only way to be able to justify that everything in life is happening for us is to realize there is this bigger power. There is this bigger universe out there. And each of us here know just simply how tremendously talented David White was. And so my belief has got to be that he was called to a much higher calling out there, especially after hearing the details that Tommy shared with us this morning at the open. And thanks so much for doing that, Tommy. And leading us off. Um, so. I do believe that everything in life happens for us, and that's why I met Dave White. I met Dave White in 2006. I read some, and first of all, for all of you that you have either sent emails to us at TFNN or all the postings inside the Tiger's Den, thank you for doing that. I wish Dave was here to read those things. He would be, um, he would be floored, I think. Uh, he's a pretty humble person. And uh, so uh, thank you for uh, sharing all those thoughts and ideas. I saw somebody had purchased David's software in 2002, maybe one of the first individuals. And uh, I was about four years behind that and uh, purchased that software package in 2006. Dave was just wonderful about helping me get that installed, teaching me, helping me to understand. I was a new knock. Hey, I was totally green at that stage of the game. I, I couldn't look at a chart and tell you what in the heck it meant uh, at all. Uh, but Dave helped me through that. I understand. I understood the power law vector indicator out there and, and the great tools uh, that uh, that Dave had developed. And then that, uh, you know, uh, let's say customer client relationship uh, blossomed into a friendship, a uh, peer to peer friendship in 2009, 2010 time frame when I joined forces with uh, Tom. Actually, it's probably uh, about a couple years after, maybe about 2000. 11 really when I think that 2010 to 2011 when the relationship really started to get solid when I started doing hosting the show uh, with um, here at TFNN and uh, um, and you know, and then just and then in the last two and a half years Dave and I we've spoken every weekend Really, we've spoken every day for the most part, sometimes just by emails. But on the weekends when we were both were free, uh, sometimes we would spend hours on the phone. Dave and I were collaborating. We were just about to complete. Uh, he was helping me build my entire system and uh, build this extraordinary scanner. And once that was built, then we were going to incorporate uh, uh, some of his uh, tools into that. And, and uh, you know, the message on uh, Monday and Wednesday from Dave was that we were basically done. There was one last thing, not done with the whole package, but done with the next really major element of that. So, um, yeah, it's just, uh, I, he's touched my life. He's touched your life, I'm sure. I know he has. Um, and I miss him greatly. So, um, let's just try to move on with the show out here. You don't need a blubbering, blabbering uh, person. So. Let's try to get to the markets out here. So we got all the U.S. indices that are trading to the upside. 
all the sectors with the exception of the technology sector uh, inside the S&P 500 are trading higher. If a gold, which has given up its overnight gains, it's now only up about 50 cents and silver's up four pennies out there. <clears throat> If we take a look at what's going on inside the markets, let's move over and take a look at, well, let's do this here. Stay on this screen. What we know that we do have with regard to the ES Mini, the NQ, the Dow, and now the Russell 2000, is with regard to the ES Mini, the NQ, and the Dow, we have bottoming patterns. We have Gartley buy patterns in the case, really all three of these. These were the buy, the D points, the completion of the A to B equals CD patterns. Inside the Russell 2000, it is now completing an A to B equals CD to the downside, the 1 to 1 1.618. That may or may not be the pattern that identifies the bottom. Today is going to be the bar following bar number nine. So what we know that we have now is we will have bottom patterns in each of the four equity future contracts. Now, the cool thing about that is that if the lows get taken out, we know what the message is to us. In the meantime, the NQ is the one that's had the bottom form the earliest. It is trading with inside its February 2nd swing point, and a continued close above 12, 632 will signal at least a test of the high, maybe even taking out the high, and that high there's going to keep an eye on is 13068. That is a likely outcome, I would say, if we get the ES Mini to get above the top of its daily profile. Not just get above it, but close above it. 4,007. In the case of the Dow, the Dow traded up into its resistance zone. So the Dow has a bearish structured profile. That bearish structured profile has resistance between 32,586 and 32,797. So really the Dow, in order to suggest that it's changing its trend for whatever period of time that might be, needs a close above 32,797. And in the case of the Russell 2000, this is a new profile that is attempting to form. The support level, or the bottom, is 1727. Man, stuff. And the top, 1825. So you do have all four equity future contracts that are certainly attempting to form a bar forming the bottom. There's no question about that. Let's go take a look at those white background charts. So when we see the ES Mini, we can see that price is trading right up into resistance, that red oscillator on change line, which is at 39.72. So if price can close above that, it still needs to uh, close above 4,007 to suggest to you and I that this market wants to move higher. We've already really covered the NQ. There's nothing additional out here that we can take a look at. The Dow Equity Future contract has a buy the D point pattern and a bullish reversal candle today. And at the moment, it's a, uh, a, a piercing candle bullish. I'm sorry, it's a, yeah, it's a, uh, no, it's not anything just yet. But if we do get a bullish reversal candle today, you would get a confirmed um, Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern out there. And the same really with regard to the Russell. But look, the TD9 count bottom is really all that you need out there. So we've got bottoms in all four of the daily equity future contracts. The issues really for the market, you've got that spot volatile index, which is still well above its 50-day exponential moving average. The 50-day is at 2162. The spot right now, 2460. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Maybe Dave is uh, hanging out with Bud and Ed today, and uh, if they are, they're looking down on us, and they'd appreciate this chart. At least Bud most certainly would. This chart here is of the uh, Dow, the cash indice out here, and the green horizontal lines are referred to as the horizontal trading ranges. Now, Bud taught something called primary trading ranges. He did his visually, I do mine electronically out there. And when I say I do mine electronically, what this tool is doing, it's looking for the largest number of co-located opens and closes. When I say co-located, it doesn't matter whether it's an open or a close, or they're next to each other out there. And you look for the largest consolidation area. On this chart here, it turns out that on the daily time, for weekly time frame, I'm on the weekly chart here, that at 10,558, there's been 180 six occurrences where price on a weekly basis stopped really near that level. That sets up the first primary trading range. The second one was set up here at the uh, what appears right now. Well, it was down at 79, 36, 54. There were 65 of those. So once we have that established, then each of the incremental horizontal lines that you look at are increased by that value difference. Now take us to where we're at today. Really a couple different things that we're looking at. First, we're looking at a rising price channel. Those in the blue diagonal going from a lower left to upper right, we can see there was a descending price channel, a price that was contained within. It finally broke out of that, where it ran into resistance was at its horizontal trading range. That was up at the 34,152 level. We can see that clearly. Now what price is done, it's pulled back. Oftentimes, you know, when you pull out of a descending price channel, you come back and test it, and if it tests and reject it, it's a bullish sign. Well, that really took place back in the December time frame. Tested it, rejected it, tried to move higher, ran into resistance at that 34,152 level. Now, folks, you don't use this to the penny. You don't use this right to the dollar. You use this as a range. These are trading ranges out there. And so you can see how price has been contained within the trading range that we're in now, with 31,530 being support and 34,152 being resistant. Now, the interesting thing about the move last week, the week before, was price was just pulling back and retesting that descending price channel. So that would then say if you can't bust them to the downside, you try to bust them to the upside out there. 
let's uh, move on from this and let's go take a look at some of the requests that have come in and I'll take all the requests that I can. I, I like to do that each and every day um, and certainly today is no different, but I will take each and every request that we can get. So let's go ahead and change my screens. We'll go over to the white background screens here momentarily. And uh, the first request was for, was Dan who wanted to take a look at the yen. So let me get to the yen charts out there. And I believe Dan was asking if we see any kind of a, a bottom signal. So let's go see what the charts are communicating to us, Dan. Here on the upper left-hand side, you've got the monthly time frame chart. Prices below a green oscillator and change line just simply says that uh, price might be pulling back. Now, it hasn't taken out last month's lows, but it did take out last month's high. So I'm not overly um, caught up in here that, the, that, that this is telling us for sure that price wants to move lower. If I take a look at the weekly time frame chart last week, as an example, it also found resistance at its green oscillator and change line. Now, this has taken out last week's low. And it's not trading below it right now. If you look at the daily time frame chart, and this is, I think, what you were really asking about, Dan. I'm just simply going to expand out the daily chart. I think this is what you were looking for. If we take a look at, so if we take a look at what price has done so far, the, the question basically was, are we seeing any kind of support? And the support here, Dan, is right at the bottom of its TD9 count breakout level. And that's at 131.279 if we want to really get granular out there. Now, what we don't have is really any kind of a bottoming signal. Today is bar number seven. Let's draw in the potential A to B equals CD pattern as well out here. So the A point, uh, is that the low? Yeah, that's perfect. So the, uh, I've drawn to the A to B. We're going to just simply cut and paste and assemble here. Uh, that's what the uh, beauty of being an actual CPA is. You can cut, paste, and assemble. So now we take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern. We're a little bit, so that's going to be right around 129.40, 129.50, let's call it. So... Um, we're not close enough to confirm a, uh, an a, a completed A to B equals CD that's just waiting for a bearish, a bullish reversal candle. Uh, but perhaps we get a TD9 count bottom that could take place between tomorrow and Thursday out there. So do I see support? If that was the answer, the absolute answer is yes. 1.31, 131.27 out there. If that level fails, well, then it suggests moving back to the lows here from back in uh, November. Uh, January, January 16th. However, I'd hearken to say if we get a TD9 count bottom, that most likely would be the low of the uh, pattern out there. If I take a look at any of the other time frame charts, some intraday charts we can see here, 61, 22, 45 hour. There are roads minted indicator bottom patterns that have been confirmed here. They're suggesting that the yen next level of resistance. It's where it's at right now. If you look at that five hour chart, sitting right on that oscillator and change line, Dan. Uh, I think we got to do this here. Uh, which is currently priced at 131.76, let's call it, 131.76. So if price can move above that, it would suggest that the uh, yen, uh, I would say close above that, would then further rally with 132.38 to 132.72 being its price targets. So I hope that helps you out, Dan, with regard to the yen. The next question coming in is from SNP inside the Tiger's Den. And SNP, oh, let me close out these charts here. It's taking up some resources. All right, so let's get back to uh, which chart here um, might be this one. Yeah. So what S&P wants us to take a look at is Nugget. And I shared with him that I was going to really rip apart the GDX charts, but we would go ahead and take a look at Nugget. The reason is because the GDX, which is just a one-to-one, -one, is going to provide you and I with the better source of information. And right now, what we can see here in the GDX, we'll see a A to B equals CD to the upside. So let's go ahead and draw that pattern in. The A point down here from the trading day of March 9th makes a nice run up to a high that takes place on March the 15th. And it pulls back for just one day. That pullback is enough to set up the C point of an A to B equals CD to the upside. So let's go ahead let's go ahead and put this in there too, just to give you an initial price projection. So the price projection of that would get us up into about the 3170 uh, ish type area. Now that pattern is in play. What the GDX is doing though, much like Dan was asking, do we see any kind of support in the yen? And uh Okay, good. So, uh, so with regard to the um, uh, with regard to the yen, which was finding supported a TD nine count breakout area, what the yen is or what the GDX is doing is finding resistance at the TD nine count breakdown area. So you're up into a resistance level. You'd love to see price close above that. Now, the B point, 
which had volume. Let's just see. I didn't haven't checked out the volume. I, I didn't touch my computer this week. I just could not look at a screen. Anyways, the volume, 34 million shares, was taken out with 63 million shares. So you have a confirmed A to B equals C to the upside. And uh, and, and I would say that uh, with the targets being around 3170 to 33 bucks. Now, if price were to close below the C point, that's a whole different story. But that's not what we have. What we have is price dealing with resistance, 3091. If we take a look at a weekly time frame chart out here, the weekly time frame chart shows a close above the top of its weekly profile. We're still above that at 3045. That suggests price wants to run into the swing point from January 27th, anywhere between 3171 and 3334. On the monthly time frame chart, prices trade above the top of its profile. It's a red oscillator and change line, so it's not as strong as um, as uh, as as a green oscillator and change line. But nonetheless, it's still above resistance, and that suggests that it too wants to move higher. So, with regard to the GDX, let's take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart before we go out here for break. And what this shows is a T is a Rhodes momentum indicator top. The key levels of support on a pullback, 3066, the bottom of its profile, and then finally 3010. If we close below 3010, that says we need to come back and take a look at certainly what's going on in gold and silver, as well as the GDX. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, you know, David White was just a very special man. He was born a special man. For those of you that don't know, David was born on February 29th. February 29th, and I always had fun, I guess, with uh, him because he got to celebrate that birthday, you know, twice. Or uh, I would say, what do you, you sell? He liked to celebrate on the 28th versus uh, March the uh, first out there. 
I like to celebrate it for him on both of those days. Just think he's the only person I've ever met uh, born on um, March uh, on February 29th out there. But I just think that that was just one of the other unique things that made him made him the individual that he is, made him such a special uh, person. I heard Tommy talking about how Dave was a perfectionist out there, and I really became to understand that over the last two and a half years as we've been building uh, this uh, scanner, which, um, you know, we'd run into obstacles, and I would be like, hey, I want to get this done now, or I need this next thing, and, and Dave was a very patient, methodical, as you know, person out there, and it was like, Steve, we're going to get this thing done right the first time. We wouldn't move on to the next aspect. I said, you know what? Just let's leave this behind. Let's move on to the next thing. Very much a, a perfectionist. And, and I really do appreciate that about Dave. And I really think that's what each of us here are trying to do is use our tools, sincerely provide you with the most accurate information that we have and our interpretation of that uh, information out there. So. Yeah, very special man. I do have the charts here for the Nugget uh, that are up on my screen, SNP. So what you can see, the difference between the Nugget and the GBX here, in the case of the Nugget, we'd take a look at this chart and I'd say, oh, boy. Um, you know, the way that it dealt with this uh, TD9 count breakdown level of 39.26 might really be sick. Even though it's got that confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside, might be signaling to us that it wants to pull all the way back to 33.92 as an example. Uh, what I liked about the GDX chart was the fact that uh, we saw that uh, price was trading above that level. Grant it hasn't uh, taken it out uh, still just a, a little bit uh, um, better in view than I was looking so so real quickly here back to the uh, GDX just for SNP since that's what you're following the GDX TD9 count breakout area that you'll be watching on any kind of retracement out here is 36.57 and you're at 38.27 I realize that's a two dollar move that's a you know but seven percent or so uh, type move on this uh, instrument um, the real key area support, or another key area support, I guess, before that would be its bullish structured profile, which is at 37.87. I'd say if you get a close blow that, that's a problem. But we did close blow it on Friday, opened right back, gapped up uh, this morning out there. It's got that Rhodes momentum indicator. So watch those support levels for yourself inside of Nugget. But at this stage here, until things totally reverse, you got to like what gold is doing, and you have to like about what the uh, miners are doing as well. So I hope that helps you out. Let's go to the next question out here. Uh, this is from uh, Alton. And Alton writes in, he wants to take a look at EGO. And uh, EGO, I'm not sure what it is, but it doesn't matter. What we can see here about EGO is that price is taking on prior resistance. So on the trading day of uh, February 2nd, 2023, this confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. It confirmed that when it generated that bearish dark cloud cover candle. That sets up resistance at the high, and the high was the day before. And that high was 9.98. On Friday, you closed below 9.98. You got up to 10.09, but you rejected that resistance level. That is resistance. This morning, you have done the same. Now, volume on Friday was 5.3 million shares, pushing into 1.8 million shares, 1.3 million shares out there. So no surprise that it's being tested again. What you really want to see out here for the next bullish signal um, would be a close above that high. And again, that high, Alton, is up at the 9. 98 area. If you get that, you should be off to the races, and you may in fact get a large A to B equals CD to the upside. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, price above all resistance levels, so this looks very good. The monthly chart is above all resistance levels, so that looks uh, very well. That looks very good as well. If I look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here, it has a Rhodes momentum indicator topping pattern that has simply led to a test uh, with inside the profile support area down at the 991 area and resistance up at 1009. Uh, there's the next level of support on a further decline out here, and there would be an A to B equals CD pattern would take us down towards that 972 level. This on a 30-minute basis is where price had broken out from. Uh, so that is EGO, and that was for Alton. Uh, the next request, and I think the only other request that I have right now, so if uh, if you uh, um, if you've got a request, I, I'll take them. If I've overlooked yours, please just retype it back in. But I believe we're going to take a look at the uh, ten year uh, interest rates out here, and this is going to be for Coda. Uh, was it Coda? Was it? Uh, yeah, it was Coda inside the uh, Tiger's Den. So let's switch charts here. I'm going to just switch over to the black background charts. Coda, we'll take a look at it. See what the signals it's providing us, if anything, out here. Now, the interesting thing when I take a look at this chart, Code, and I'm sure you, you recognize this, and I believe you said you were short uh, rates out here. Um, here's an interesting thing. If you're ever looking for an island top, 
I would say that the uh, two uh, ten year Treasury, that's what we're looking at right now, certainly generated that. And that was on the trading day of February second. So, folks, if you're ever wondering what an island top is, it's where we would have a gap to the upside on a prior session. So the prior session here would have been Feb uh, March the uh, 1st. Very next trading day, this uh, gaps up, March the uh, 2nd. Then the next day, it gaps to the downside. And the high of that gap to the downside was up at the uh, 402 level, uh, which was uh, well below the actual low of that candle that created that island. That is a bearish signal out there. And we can see that the market certainly moved lower. Now what we can also see out here is price testing support. So price pulled back to the February 2nd low, anywhere between the range of uh, three 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 dollars and thirty three three point three three i should say and the high of 340 out there interest rate wise for the 10 year right now you're at 346 out here all that i have on this for any kind of signals there'd really be two coda two to pay attention to the first signal is the fact that on the daily time frame we pulled back to a swing point we've tested it and we've rejected it we've done that a couple of times the second is the weekly profiles the weekly profile shows support at 3.39 percent which is where price got down to last week and it has found support now it is a slightly bearish structured profile so the resistance zone on a move higher is between 356 and 367 out there you also wanted the uh, tnx let's go ahead and uh, pop that on our screen out here see what kind of signal information we get <clears throat> and uh, now we've got no we don't have it why didn't that come up what did Stevie do T and TYX thank you Coda uh, I'm not exactly myself today um, that's an understatement uh, so if we take a look at this Code about the only thing that I so really the same kind of thing was taking place. So I look at a swing point. I come back to the swing point from December 7. Now that swing point, the um, on this latest go round, that swing point high of that swing point was tested um, on. March the 13th, today's the 20th, so last Monday, that was tested and rejected. So that's a key level to watch. Price is below profiles here. So I just simply have to go back and take a look at the weekly time frame. And on the weekly time frame, price has support the 30-year uh, treasury interest rate at $3.50. Price got down there last week. This is a bullish structured profile. I would say that rates would be coming down if we saw a close below $3.50. $3.50, 3.5%, you, you know what I mean. And uh, because that would be a close below the bottom of its weekly profile. So not on a daily basis, but on a weekly time frame, that's where we would need to see price. So both on the 10-year and on the 30-year, uh, prices pulled back to uh, test uh, support out there. So uh, thank you so much for the uh, question. And uh, let's see here. I think we might have a caller. We know we've got Brent in Martinez, California. Hey, Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm hanging in there, Steve. I know all of us are trying to cope with what happened with David, and it's very difficult to to deal with. I've gone through <laughs> too much of this lately. And yeah, I, have I, to, I hear you. I hear you. I guess deal with it the way you do. I mean, there has to be some higher purpose for somebody as quality as David, and I've had too many good people I know lately have, have had the same thing happen, so that's the only way that I can cope with it personally. Hey, Brent, uh, Brent we'll be back in just a few moments and hold those thoughts. Those are good ones. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. All the USCCs trade the upside. Same thing with the sectors inside the S&P 500. And uh, Brent, my apology for uh, going to you without looking at the clock, realizing we were so close to a uh, break out there. So I, I hated to do that. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a tough one. And, you know, and like I said, my my tough thing has always been been uh, I believe so much in that life happens for us. But boy, when it when it comes to situations like this, it, it's 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 one that I've always struggled with. But like like you said, you know, you just you've got to have a I just have a belief that there's a better, there's a bigger reason behind it all. I don't know how else to cope yeah. with it, you know. Otherwise, yeah, exactly. That's it's the only way I can deal with it. And I think the one lesson I've tried to take from it's a hard lesson to to deal with, but I just try to. And of course, I thank God every day, you know, for the the life I've been given, the children yes. I have, you know, the life I have. Yes, yes. I just try to make the most of it every day. That's all you can do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's 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 no doubt about that, no doubt about that. So, uh, but thank you, thank you for your call, thank you for sharing your thoughts and uh, feelings and emotions of, about Dave. And uh, it's going to take us a while, I think, each of us to uh, to get through this. But um, uh, today's a good day. Uh, just to, it's been hard for me to talk about. Whew. Anyways, uh, Brent, so you want to take a look at the Russell 2000, which is having a nice day out there. It's up uh, about 31 points, about one to eight tenths percent. In fact, it's leading the uh, charge to the upside. Uh, so what's, what's your take? What information can I, what can I provide you with? I would appreciate your analysis. And then I guess my one ob observation that I had was just if you're looking at the last uh, number of days, we've kind of had this back and forth and back and forth. And today it looks like a pretty bullish candle. I just... Wanted to see what you thought about it. And I, I do recall you talking about, I think you did the 1.618 uh, mm -hmm. expansion mm -hmm. of the, of the you know, AB equals CD. But just other than that, yeah, what else you had to uh, reflect on that? Yeah, so the, uh, well, what I do have, Brent, is that today, w this will complete, well, let me hold on, hold on a second here. So I was going to say this will complete a TD9 count bottom day, but I have to, uh, I, I, knowing that I'm not my full self, <laughs> It will only do that if it closes below 1758.80. Let me make sure I get the right close. Yes, yeah, 1758.80. So price, uh, so I, I think I misspoke out there because uh, I was indicating to people that it will complete, it will definitely complete a TD9 count pattern today. And that, that is not correct. So take that back, folks, and write that down on your pad of paper. It will only complete a TD9 count bottom 
and it needs to happen today, is a close blow 1758.80. If we did get that, Brent, um, then what that would signal to you and I is that price should at least rally up to the its an oscillator and change line, which is currently in about the 1810-ish level out there. The weekly chart, if we go back and we take a look at the weekly chart, very much like the Dow, I put up the charts earlier that I use uh, really to showcase uh, Bud Rolf's uh, work out there, his primary trading range. I refer to them as horizontal trading ranges now. And when you break through, in this case here, it was a descending price channel. Oftentimes, price will come back and test that. Now, in the case of the Dow, it had done it number of times. In the case of the Russell 2000, uh, this is the first test of that. So that's a bullish signal out there. The monthly time frame chart still has a TD9 count bottom. The weekly's got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. And we may get a... Uh, TD9 count bottom today in the Russell. If we don't, then what it still needs is that bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom out there. So the question is, will we get some type of a pullback or retracement, um, you know, today? And the only thing that I've got out here to even suggest anything right now, it looks to me like would be the 30-minute time frame chart. And on a 30-minute time frame chart, price basically got up to its second TD9 count resistance area at 1776. We're starting to see price pull back right now. I don't have, well, yeah, I really don't have any other kind of a, I suppose I could put it. Uh, so if I were to try to put an A to B equals CD pattern, Brent, on a 30 minute time frame chart, the C point that I'd have to, the B point I'd have to use would be the same candle as the C point. And I really kind of hate doing that out there. Um, so but what this does show me is that at least price might be pulling back to the 1757 level. So I know that was a lot of confusion. Help me unconfuse you. <laughs> no, that's all good stuff, Steve. Can I just ask quickly, which contract are you looking at? I'm looking at the June contract. Okay. Yeah, Wanted so to make looking, sure we're on the same page. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at the June contract. And, you know, I don't see any topping patterns intraday other than really what I just gave to you. Um so it, you know, when I well, I, I will just have to wait until tomorrow to see if we get that TD nine count bottom. I think that's really with regard to the Russell. If we do, then we've got synergy amongst all four of the equity future contracts, and that they're definitely communicating to us that they want to form a bottom. And that's both a bullish and a bearish sign because if we take out those lows, well, we know what that means. Yeah, just keep an eye on the VIX, like you mentioned, and see how it all plays out. So thank you so much, Steve, and just you know, have yourself a good day. I will. I'll do it. Hey, Brent, thank you very much for calling in. I really appreciate it. Helps me out a lot. So thank you for doing that. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Um, can I look at GSM? So, yes. Uh, so uh, there was a question. Let me go to this first. I haven't been really good about keeping track of what I should look at. So there's a question about take a look at um, uh, the financials and wheat out there. So somebody took a long trade in wheat. Let me come back to my soft commodity chart out here. I'm just going to switch panels just to provide this individual with some information to pay attention to. So I don't believe that I saw a bottom pattern inside of uh, wheat out there. That doesn't mean that it hasn't bottomed. I'm looking at the uh, May contract for wheat up here, which we can see right now is consolidating with inside its daily profile. So you have sellers that are lined up at 721.60 and buyers lined up at 6 67. I wish I could provide you with more information than that, but that's what I've got with regard to uh, wheat. We'll just stay here for the moment and take a look at the um, at the XLF. So with regard to the financials, so and I also try to get a XLF chart fired up. Nope, I can't do it there. Let me try right here. Let me just get the XLF chart uh, fired up on my other screen. Just see if there's anything that pops out. So we take a look at the XLF. This person, this individual went long. And so when I take a look at uh, the uh, chart patterns here, if I'm looking for was there any support, boy, on the financial sector. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm on U USB. That's another question. Jeez, Louise, Stevie, get your stuff together. So in the case of the financial sector, Friday was a TD9 count bottom. So that was bar number nine. Today will become the bar following bar number nine. So you're long the financials. That sounds like a solid trade to me. You would close that out if you got a close below um, Friday's low. That low out there is three dollars and eighty nine cents. Now, there's a profile that's in place out here at thirty one eighty five. There's only two lines that you see thirty one eighty five. 
and 3429. The reason you only see two lines, the center and the bottom are at the same exact place, 3185. So that is going to be your significant level of resistance on a further rally. If you can get above that, that's going to be a big positive. That's going to suggest that price may want to target the 3429 level. Now, before price would get up there, it has to deal with its oscillator and change line. I'll show you where that's at by switching back to a different set of uh, charts, the white background charts. As we take a look at that, 3263 or thereabouts is your resistance zone for the XLF on its daily time frame. And you'll see the TD9 count pattern. On a monthly basis, price is pulled back to test support. That was the uh, bottom of its monthly profile. And I don't have any kind of a bottoming signal inside of the XLF for its weekly time frame. So we've got to go with the daily and what the monthly is communicating to you and I. On a 30-minute basis, I don't have any reasons to share with you that, uh, that the XLF is going to uh, top right here. So the XLF looks like a good trade. Just make sure you use proper position sizing out there. And that way you'll stay out of the same trouble that all these banks have gotten into. You don't want to be over leveraged. You want to have your stop and your exits in place at the time of entry. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, uh, look, if I uh, if if you sent in a request uh, by email and I overlooked it, um, I will make sure that I uh, I will respond back to you personally, Roger. I don't know that I'll get to your request out there, but I certainly will follow back up with you after lunch out there. So let's try to um, let's try to close out the show uh, by taking a look at USB. A couple of instruments out here. USB. Uh, this is for one of our dinners. Now, what I don't see is any kind of a bottom signal. What you do have though is a hammer candle that formed back on March the 16th. So that low is going to be critical to you. If price were to close below 36.26, it tells you that this still wants lower price. It has triggered a Rosemontum indicator signal, but this requires a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. I've got nothing on the um, weekly time frame to suggest that this is a bottom, so you got to rely on the monthly. And the monthly shows a TD9 count top. That took price all the way back to its breakout level of support of 34.17. So 34.17 and that bullish hammer candle from March 16th down at the uh, 32.72 levels. Those are the areas to keep an eye on. You close below that and USB wants to head lower. There was a request to take a look at uh, Lightspeed Crude. So let's pop those charts up on our screen. The daily chart, we're taking a look at the May contract. If you take a look at the, the daily chart out here, this will complete a TD9 count bottom. This is the bar following bar number nine. What Lightspeed Crude should do for its May contract is target its oscillator and change line. That is currently printed at 71.51. There's a TD9 count on the 30-minute time frame, and that uh, stopped the uh, rally out there. That was at uh, 9.30 this morning when price got up to 67.06. A close above 67.06 is going to suggest an A to B equals CD to the upside. Recognize, though, that you do have resistance at 67.64. That is a TD9 count breakdown level for its 30-minute time frame. We've got some nice bottoming patterns on the intraday charts, the five-hour, the four-hour, the two-hour, this one-hour chart out there. So it does look like Lightspeed Crude has, in fact, bottomed out there. And uh, uh, so that should impact the XLE, the energy sector as well. Folks, thanks so much for your patience. Thanks for your kindness, all of your good words out there. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt for a while. Rest in peace, my good friend, David White.